Let's talk about your history. You're a baritone now, but you started off rather higher up the register. <laughs> yes, I was, I was a boy treble for many years and, uh, until my voice changed and I had to go back on the farm on, in Stratford, Ontario, Canada. And um, it was interesting. I enjoyed singing as a boy treble. I did a lot of solo work. I premiered the Mahler Fourth Symphony as a, as a boy treble. And uh, it was very exciting. I performed in a lot of choir situations with the Vienna Boys Choir, Paris Boys Choir, American Boys Choir. And uh, it gave me a great background, but I was excited that I had a voice after the change. So, <laughs> you've sung plenty of comic roles over the years, and uh, a chance for some comedy in Ravel's Drinking Song. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a fun piece, and uh, uh, I was coached that by Rosemary Landry, who who learned that from uh, Suzet. So I, I was I was very excited to learn that from her, and back in Toronto, Ontario, and it's a fun piece. It's a very fun piece. The aria that you've chosen from La Traviata is a glorious piece, but it can be quite difficult to, to sort of keep the interest going into the second verse. Well, that piece is, a, is, is an extraordinary piece of music, and uh, the opera itself is one of my favourite. Um, I take that, when I sing that to an audience, I take that um, deep inside me, because, of course, I grew up on a farm. And uh, I always think of my father, who's, who's calling me back to the farm and take over the farm from generation to generation. And uh, I know what it means to him, and I know what uh, it means to me, and therefore I can relate that to the character of Germont. Hai il tuo vecchio genitor, tu non sai quando soffri, tu non sai quando soffri, il tuo vecchio genitor, te lontano di squallor, il suo tetto si coprì, il suo tetto si coprì. Squalor and squalor, my 
How did you think doing an opera or doing something like this? Definitely there's something like this. You've got so many people with you in an opera. You've got your colleagues, you've got a costume which kind of disguises you and this is you're basically naked up there. People don't realize this this is crazy. So Graham, what did you make of James? He seemed to stride onto stage, but on the other hand seemed to be very laid back. He did. He's the second uh, competitor in this competition who's come from the famous training schools at San Francisco Opera. And they do seem to turn out uh, singers who are entirely comfortable with themselves, comfortable with the music, and comfortable with the audience. He also, uh, in his program, showed various different sides of his personality. Uh, in the Ravel drinking song, he was bucolic and, uh, and funny. Uh, and in De Provence, uh, the uh, uh, Verdi aria from Traviata from Jamal Per. Um, he was uh, passionate, concerned, very, very dramatic. But what do you think the judges would have, would have made of that performance? Well, of course, uh, Jamal Per was one of Cheryl Mullins's most famous roles, so he'd have been looking at it with a very critical eye, but I hope he'd be pleased. Graham, thanks very much indeed. You, the winner this evening, is James Westman. He toured the world as a celebrated boy soprano. And now here's James Westman, the baritone, receiving the trophy donated by Welsh Royal Crystal for winning tonight's round.
He is uh, as devastated as anybody at the loss of Violetta because he knows a, a real heart has been broken here. There is a story saying that three years ago, Papa Germont's wife has died. So he's left alone with his daughter. And his daughter's life and his son's life is the only thing left. And he comes to Paris to stop his son from marrying the prostitute, Violetta, or the, the courtesan, more, more, more deliberately. But, and he comes to Paris to stop this marriage from happening um, for his daughter's sake and for his own son's sake, and especially for his sake and for his dreams. And it completely backfires because he realizes that Alfredo, Alfredo's love for Violetta is the only thing that Alfredo has ever cared about. This is the, this is the quintessential love for Alfredo. And the best woman likely would be possible for his, for his son. <clears throat> he realizes a great dignity right off the bat when he comes in and says, I am, I am Alfredo's father. You've destroyed him. And she says, no, you're in my house. You won't speak to me like that. And right then he says, what dignity this woman has for a courtesan. And um, he's taken, taken back by her, even the little conversations they, they have. And, and there it comes back to the Verdi kind of the parental figure. He treats her kind of like a daughter <clears throat> by the time the duet happens. But he still is very firm at the end of the duet saying, no, you have to leave him. Partite, goodbye, adio. And um, so there's changes that he makes and there's emotional changes, but he stays very firm. And that's my take on the character. It's a universal father character. And you see it happening all the time. Look at the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> it's, it's there every day, my goodness. My favorite moment in the opera, it's in the duet, and it's when Violetta says, Oh, That, for me, is, it's very hard not to get too emotionally involved. Um, sometimes, especially with, with Anya, you can really break down because at that point, she says, tell your beautiful daughter what I've done, you know, that, that I've made the sacrifice for, for, for her brother or for your family. And <clears throat> it's a change in her character. And, that, and it's a wonderful transformation of the music. Everything's very kind of um, anxious. And then Verdi just kind of creates this very smooth transition with her singing, you know, Adi. And as a character, I'm left listening to this without singing underneath her, and usually very close to her at the time because of the previous um, 
language that was stated. Um, I say, you will be my, my angel, my consul. You, you, will, you will help me. Thank you very much. And I'm very close to her. And then she says this to me. And it's a wonderful moment f f for my character and for, for me on stage because I, I feel a tremendous amount of mixed emotions. I feel guilt. I feel love. I feel caring for this person. I feel struggled. I feel angst. Um, and then I just hear this beautiful music. It's tremendous theater at that point. That's my favorite.
Spring, I'm 
Let the spirit of this child 